Ramen is not happy here, man. I think he's going to call, though. Like, he wants to call, right? He wants to call. He doesn't want to bust, but he wants to call. He's just trying to figure out if he can. So we're about halfway through where we were uh, the last match. We're just going to keep it going. Afternoon. What's up, Axiom Fox? How's it going, man? Good to see you. I despise for his that was 100% penalty from JG710. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, my first impression was like like the Southampton fan saying it wasn't a penalty because there wasn't a lot of contact, but it's still... Uh, I mean, it, it obstructed his ability to make the shot, so it seems like it was. But again, I'm, I'm not really confident enough to make a call either way, but <laughs> the, the game's over. We've won it, man. We've won it. But I think you guys did play better for more minutes of the game. Any home games this week, evening? Uh, not from me. We have a home game tomorrow, Callum. So we'll be getting a home game going then. But uh, for today, just playing a bit of KO series. Actually, the first events have started up. So we went hop into one on the side. We're going to pick up the action here with Philip Grusom raising it up to 900,000. Mark's going to three bet to two and a half million here. So we continue on. As we can see, we're 59 players left in the fields. And I think they play down to 16 or 24 today, something like that. Yo, Tough Spot, what's up, man? 17-month resub. Welcome back to the team, Tough Spot, you legend. Thank you very much, dude. Appreciate that. All right, action back on Philip Grusom now, who is calling, it looks like. Is going to call. Two and a half million, okay. So we're going to go to flop. Six million in the middle. Flop is ace, seven, deuce. Dry board, not a lot going on here. We know this isn't a very good flop for Jax, but we can, of course, see the hands and know that Jax have nothing to worry about here. Uh, they may be a little bit uncomfortable. But what is Philip Jerusalem going to do with King-Queen when he faces a bet? He pretty much has to fold. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Because it's just a board that really favors Mark uh, being the re-raiser. Yo, Staples, what's up, La Arts? Hello. Hola, hola. Welcome. So I am going to... Don't want to get tables now. There's still a lot of late reg, actually, so I'm just going to wait a second before I register the KO series on the side. But I am going to get them going. I'm looking forward to playing today. And Grusin folds. He doesn't like to fold. We've learned this about Philip Grusin, you know? He's not a big-time folder. Wants to be in action. Mark scooping the first pot of the day. So how's uh, Phil doing today in the Galphon Challenge? I was sweating a little bit earlier and I saw he was up early days, so I don't know if uh, he still is or what's going on there. But I hope it's going well. It's a lot of chips for Alex Fox and men. Also, in seat eight, the seat right beside the dealer, we have a friend of the stream, Ice Splash Cranberries, who we watched yesterday on day three, so it's going to be enjoyable to watch him again. What's up, my man? What's up, official KJ? What's up, dude? Foxen. Crusher, man. Crusher, Foxen. Ludo, under the gun, is going to fold the 8-4. Two party poker pros here, Ludo and Philip Grusom on the table. Second time, go ahead to Jax here. Cranberries looks somewhat interested, but it's just going to fold. The Queen Six offsuit. Gives it up. What's your thoughts on high stakes poker returning? Yeah, I heard that. I heard Poker Go bought the rights to high stakes poker. Which is amazing. I mean, the most famous poker show, um, perhaps of all time. It might, like, maybe the World Series of Poker main events, maybe WPT, but definitely the most famous cash game ever in poker. Uh, so I think it's a huge thing. I mean, hopefully more are developed. Hopefully there's more episodes. I don't know what the set would be like. The set was so iconic for high stakes poker. You know what I mean? Like the little room with the. With sort of the couches and the bar at the Bellagio. Like, I don't know if it'd feel the same in the Poker Go studios or not. Um, either way, it's good, man. All right. 
Alex Fox and looking down at the King Tennis Spades here. Probably going to raise this up. Nothing much. Bounty Hunters KO Series. A staple stream is best Thursday ever. Let's get it, bro. Official KJ. Come on, man. Jamie, I'm incredi incredibly curious. Where do you fall on the white magic versus just run the Sims man divide? I feel like there's a Catholic Protestant type divide in poker. Well, minus the violence. Um, it's a good question. So Phil Humyuth is the guy that has coined the phrase white magic, which... You know, he that's his phrase, I guess. <laughs> um, and then run the Sims means like game theory optimal, sort of game theory approach to poker, less about exploitative poker. And I think both are essential. And I think I, I have to say for the people that understand simulations well, as Ludo is going to call in the big blind here, I think they understand much more how important exploitative poker is as opposed to the exploitative, exploitative players not giving enough credit to the sims people so i think i think the simulation people are are more correct than the white magic people but they're both essential men it's it's really like are you a feel player are you a math player like this is a question that's been asked a long time it's just like it's been sort of changed over over decades of poker improving and getting better and the feel player is understanding human beings that's it right that's the feel part. That's the white magic part. It's understanding how human beings act in certain situations. Being able to put them on a range, assign a likelihood of them doing a certain thing. That's that's the feel part, right? Um, that Phil Hum youth, for example, is so good at because he's played with amateurs for so long that he really just understands how they're going to be playing certain spots. But then once you have that feeling of my opponent is going to be playing these hands like this, or I think it's this likelihood my opponent's going to be bluffing, then it's the math. Then it's just run the sims, man. So the feel part is coming up the range, is understanding human beings. The math part is what to do once you have that information. Both are essential. To be an elite level poker player, you need both. Um, you know, And people can sort of get by by just relying on one side or the other, but they're misguided if they think they're relying on just one. Uh, you know, So both are very important. Um, in the end, which is more important the math because you're guaranteeing yourself a certain level of success with the math, whereas with the feel, you don't have that certain guarantee. Um, so I, I'd say the math is slightly more important. They're both essential to being successful with poker. Hopefully that answers your question. Anyways, picking up the action here, Alex Fox has got the flush draw. Ludo. With the call on the call, to the river, three of hearts. <laughs> now this is a spot. Does Alex Foxen continue here? Yeah. It's a pretty brick river. This is kind of a good bluff card for Alex. Ace four, six four. Does he pull off the barrel or just give it up? And how is Ludo feeling here? I assume okay. You know, he flops top pair, top kicker. Calls flop, calls turn. Three is a brick, you know? We don't think Alex Foxen has too many six fours that just completed or or ace fours. Like, it's just not that much. So, especially for a bet of 4.3 million, I feel like Ludo's going to just call here. One of his best hands, I would think. What's up, Gunners? Welcome back, man. Ed K in the building as well. What's up, Ed K? What's up, Gunners? You beauties? I think Ludo calls here, man. You can't get away from this spot. There it is. There it is. Nice pot for Ludovic Gailovic. Scooping up a bunch of chips. Alex Fox and the... Tournament Poker World's number one ranked player for two years in a row. Lose a few chips there. Out to the field, we're going to take a look at one of the outer tables. That's going to be the next feature table. All right, so we're actually going to switch up to this table. Ben Heath, the guy at the hands of my biggest live tournament bust out there uh, in seat number one. But it'll be interesting to see. Peter Jetton is still in there. Nice. It'll be nice to watch him play again. I'm a big fan of Peter Jetton. That'll be good. Uh, is that Nick 
Marchenstein or not? I don't know. I'm not sure. Don't know who this player is by face. Either of these players. But I like I like the quick veggie hype. I I believe the older gentleman is Scott something. Right? Guy donates a lot to charity. He's had some decent runs in tournaments. Don't know C2 yet. And then Ben Heath. Uh, legend of the game, man. Very good player. Very good player. We played a big hand in Barcelona where he took all my chefs. It hurt. Set over set. Scott Wellenbach. That's it, Ed. Thank you. Scott Wellenbach. Okay. So I don't know how many hands we're going to get on this featured table before we switch up, but we'll see. Thanks for showing these. I enjoy this. Cheers, MVIL kid. Yeah, I want to start uploading them on YouTube as well. So I plan to upload uh, all of the streams, chop them into maybe 30 minutes, and then upload them episode by episode. Let's see if people like it. I don't know if they will. Getting a look at the chip stacks here. We have Scott with the Ace of Hearts, Queen of Diamonds. Ludovic. So there's a raise in the hijack from Scott. Ludo calls in the small blind. Frank squeezes with Ace King, and now Scott's going to call. Action back on Ludo, and stacks are very deep here. And Ludo has to call, what, one and a half million into a pot of six million, and he's 32 million chips deep. I think he should call, and there it is. There it is. So we're going to go to a flop. Ace king, ace queen, five. And if we get an ace five, three, that would be fun. <laughs> oh, it's a king on the flop. Whoa, there's a five. Frank's dead, man. How can Frank get away from this hand? He can't. There's 7.6 million in the middle. Ludo. Has a set of fives. Frank's all in. He just 2x potted. Uh, Ludo's... Wow. Okay, he just 2x potted. I mean, the money was going in no matter what. But pretty crazy. Um, 53 left in the tournament here. I mean, this is a huge pot. There's 40 million in the middle. Ace or king or it's over. Queen's not going to do it. Ludo with the set of fives is going to take it down. Frank, mysterious Canadian Frank is out of the tournament in 53rd position. Still a decent payday. I mean, hey, it's all right. <laughs> How old is this tournament? It happened late November 2019. Uh, so pretty recently. It hasn't been streamed on Twitch before, so I think it's new to Twitch anyways. Ludo scooping some chips. Philip Gruesome. That's the ultimate Still sitting okay, but we're going to lose this table in a second here. <laughs> Unfortunate. We do have a friend of the stream, Ice Flash Cranberries, in the eight seat. I feel like the Party Poker Pros are just friends of the stream in that we're teammates, you know? I feel like that's fair. It's a fair thing. What positions are you in the money? I think it paid 90 or 80, so we're already in the money. Have to champ. There's the payouts. 120 paid. Okay. So we're down to 53 now, which means everyone is guaranteed 35,000. And if four spots is going to jump up an extra $5,000. Scott raises it up with the queen jack under the gun plus one. Jonathan Cranberry is going to pull the queen four. Ludo with jacks. It's the table of jacks, man. He just calls for 900K. Interesting. Why just a call with Jax? I don't understand. It's a big, big disappointment for old Tom Hall. They've postponed the tournament till next weekend. 
I'm very surprised because Jax is a pretty vulnerable hand post flop and not generally one you just want to call here. You can 3 bet if you get 4 bet, you call and go to a flop. Um, but, you know, these players are playing at a very high level. They're both extremely good at poker. So there's probably some chance that Ludo wants to never do something with a jacks, queens, kings, aces 100% of the time. He wants to sometimes call so that on certain boards, like jack high boards, he's capable of having top set. You know, that might be what's going on in our second set. <laughs> oh my god, Scott is in a lot of trouble here, man. That is a disastrous card on the turn. The case jack, Ludo has a set of jacks now. The dream, Scott checked on the flop and now has two pair. I mean, Scott has the best possible hand he can have in this spot. He never has fives, he never has sevens. Like, Queen Jack is the nuts for Scott. He's got to think he's got the best hand for sure. Ludo's always going to bet a set of fives and a set of sevens on the flop, and he's not going to call queens hardly ever, so he can't have a set of queens. L literally, this is so crazy. Ludo should not be able to have anything good here, and Scott just turned top two. This is the sickest thing, and I... I have no idea how this is going to play out because stacks are incredibly deep. There's 5 million in the middle. And Scott bet 2 million. And these players are sitting on 40 million plus stacks. Ludo's going to raise it up to 6.8. How is this going to play out? I'm, like, is Scott just going to call here on the turn? There's a lot of draws out there potentially, so maybe he wants to raise back. Or is he just going to call and then call the river? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's very clear he's not folding. <laughs> that would be insane. I can't believe that turn card. That's so incredible. Okay. There it is. A call. There's 16.4 million in the middle. Now, the river could be some action killing cards. You know, there's two flush draws out there. Club draw, heart draw. There's a couple straight draws that are possible. So there's some action killing cards. Three of spades, however, is not one of them. I don't think Ludo ever has 6-4 suited here. Again, if I'm in Scott's position, I'm struggling to find a really strong hand for Ludo. It's, re it's really hard for Luda to have anything good here. So he should definitely get paid. The question is how much? $18.5 million. That's about pot. I mean, I think this has to be called. Again, I just don't, I don't understand how Scott can fold. Of course, it would be... This would be the craziest fold I've ever seen in my life if Scott folds here. And I don't think he can. But if he does fold, I really question whether I've ever been good at poker because it would be too incredible to me. It'd be too crazy. How can Ludovic guy like just call preflop, check back on the flop, and have a set here? It's almost impossible. He has to just call with Jack's preflop and have hit the case Jack. I don't think he can have queens. I think it's extremely unlikely he has sevens or fives. And Scott has top two pair. How could it happen? Scott has to call. He has to call. There's no way around this. 35 million in the middle. If Scott calls, this is going to be 53 million chip pot. Scott really considering here. I think he's going to call, though. How? You, like, you just can't. Even if you think it's possible that Ludo called with fives and sevens pre, which he's going to do quite often, and he checked back, which he's not going to do the mass majority of the time. So, I mean, he has to first hit a set with his range. He has to second check back with a set, which he's not going to do very often at all. I mean, on a, on a queen seven five with two clubs in position 40 million chips deep you're not checking back like bottom and middle set 
He can't do it. He can't do it! How did he do it? How did he do it, man? How did he do it? That's the sickest fold I've ever seen. There is no better fold. That's the number one fold in the world as of today, 2020. There's no better fold in poker that has ever taken place. Scott is Nostradamus. That's the only way. That's the only way. What am I even doing playing this game, man? How can people, like human beings, in the world have top two, fold on the river? You can't do it. That guy's no... Uh, he is superhuman. You can't do it. Can't do it. I am so demoralized as a poker player right now. You can't do it. Nope. Scott's Nostradamus. Not fair. Can't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's one for the highlight reel like, lifetime. Like not just not just this tournament. Like the guy talking right now is Tom Hall. Like one of the one of the sickest graphs online tournament poker players ever. I've literally that's the most impressive fold I've literally ever seen in my life. Ever. Ever. I can't I honestly just I'm I'm struggling to figure out how he decided the folds. I don't understand. Like I understand like you could just take it back to level zero, like ah, I thought he had it. But man, these are extremely high level poker players. Like Ludovic Guy like has an image as a very aggressive player. He's capable of bluffing. I don't understand what just happened. Ed K, please, we need to, like, can we highlight this hand? Can we make a highlight on YouTube of when that hand started to, like, right now? Because we need, I need to save that and rewatch it. And it's probably, like, seven minutes long. I want to release it on social media. Scott has just made the best fold poker's ever seen. That's it. All the draws miss. It's, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. I can't, I... I'm speechless, man. I don't know what I'm doing out here if guys are making folds like that. Like, how can you be so right? How? I don't understand. I don't. Nope. I'm just going to be on tilt all day now, man. There's no way to come back from that. That's it. Anyways, Scott's going to bet 2 million here. He's got 32 million chips. He bets and takes it down. He's the goat. He's wow. actually the he goat. He counted his pulse looking at the clock. So he counted the beats per minute. Okay, we need to go back. 104, that is 402. One of the reasons why wow. He he, I mean, okay, we need to hear what he says here. Be more than chip, Listen like up, chat. Seven seven Listen up. <laughs> Even though you it. This is live poker, and you know, you, you gleam some information, don't you? Let's hear what he says. A little dynamic thing. Maybe Lula's just gone a little heater. Is he going to bluff it off straight away? Does that come into your thinking? Lula Maybe four hands. Fucking brutal. Four, I can't believe four hands. I, mean, I can't believe I followed it, but I think he kind of. No, I do. Like, do you, do you see? His, like, he's pulled. Like, he's pulled off and beaten that fast. Mm. You know, like at first it was, and then like uh, these two time lengths, and I counted his pulse. So look at the clock. He's the goat. He's wow. actually the he goat. He counted his pulse, looking at the clock. So he counted the beats per minute and Ludo's heart rate, and that is one of the reasons why wow. he folded. Wow, he is the goat. I that, mean, what can you what can you say about that? That was just like. It's incredible. All right, guys, 15-minute break time. Uh, okay, chat, we have solved the case now. All right, everyone, listen. We solved the case. This is incredibly important. Everyone needs to wear scarves in live poker now, okay? If you're not wearing a scarf, you're giving up an edge because literally the guy just made the fold, the biggest fold the game has ever seen, ever, in its history. He just did it by counting someone's pulse across the table and measuring it 
Seeing how it dropped over time, he wasn't that nervous and deduced he wasn't bluffing and folded top two pair against an impossible set. You need to wear a scarf. That's the main takeaway here. Also, any companies that sell scarves, buy stock. Ed K, if it's possible, if we can clip like that whole hand analysis after in like, a, you know how you can Twitch highlight like 10 minutes or 12 minutes or whatever, if we can get the whole thing, because that, that will blow up on YouTube. Like I can't believe the world does not know about that hand yet. Probably because it was it was cast on Poker Go and like you need to have a Poker Go subscription to see it, but now it's released. Like that should be an iconic hand. That like I'm blown away, man. I'm blown away. All right, we've got a new table here. <laughs> we've got a new table. We've got Scott and Nicholas here in the big line. Nicholas has 25 million chips. All right. <laughs> Real Sir Chance a lot. Gift and subs to the community. Two gift of subs. Thank you very much, Vin, for that. I appreciate it. Real Sir Chance a lot. Welcome to the team. Mutsi of five. Courtesy of Real Sir Chance a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you, dude. All right. Scott's in the lead. This is a scary board for Nicholas now. Has top pair, eight kicker. Scott has top pair and a 10 kicker. About to double up here. Don't want to jinx him, but it's uh, looking good for him. Nick's gonna have to check jam, I think. I mean, you're too shallow. So Scott bets the two million. Yeah, I mean, Nicholas with top pair, and Scott only has 7.6 million back. Like, I think this is all going in the middle. Uh, pretty much has to all go in the middle now. 52 left in the fields. And he's just gonna call. Okay, so we're gonna go to turn 7.2 million now left in the pot. Jack of Diamonds on the turn. Scott still has the best of it here. Shoves all in for pot size here. And action back on Nicholas. I don't think he can fold, you know. Uh, I just said that and was blown away. But, uh, you know, he's only got to call a pot size bet. He's got top pair. Scott is going to be capable of having some straight draws, some flush draws, uh, type hands. So I think it's a really tough spot for Nicholas to get away. You're getting two to one odds. So you need to have the best hand 33% of the time or have 33% equity in the hand, I should say. Because, of course, you have outs. Like you have 7% outs when you're against King 10, for example. Um, so, yeah. Jamie, is it this one? I want to send this hand to a friend. Post the commentary. It it blanked out the the link. Um, can you whisper me the link and then I'll be able to see it? I mean, if these online kids are making reads like that now, what chance does everyone stand? <laughs> Nicholas calls, and that's the situation. Yeah. That's the situation. Seven percent red Nicholas, an eight, and only an eight. Three outs. That's what I was about to say. I don't think anyone wants to necessarily bust him because he's a super nice dude. And if he wins, there's a good chance 1.3 finds its way to charity. Yeah, it's a win-win for Nick. Not quite. But... Jack on the river. Kings and Jacks with a 10 kicker. Scott is going to double up to 22 million up. Still at 52 left in the field. Nice hand for Scott. Take this rack of blues. <sighs> wow. I'm literally still... Absolutely blown away, man. Absolutely blown away that that went down like that. Buzzwe, what's up, man? Dropping the nine-month resub. Welcome back to the team. Hey, bro. Hope you and the PC are well. It's great. Buzz, we helped me uh, put this together. You guys built the PC. We got a beast machine in there, man. We've got the newest Ryzen. We got two graphics cards, five monitors. We got all the RAM. We're, we've, what else do we need, man? We got everything, dude. 
it's popping off here. The PC is working great, especially for live poker. I have a nice 43 inch right in the middle. No delay, dude. True. True, no delay. We're sweating some live poker here. I'm going to play KO series on the side and build up stacks. And then after day three coverage, we'll go to go to online action. What value hands could Luda have there that Queen Jack was beating? Seems like he'd rep a set or nothing from three piece meal. Well, you got to think he checked back the flop, right? So, like, he's got to be capable of checking back the flop with some Queen X type ends. Like, even Ace Queen he could possibly have, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's the sick thing. He checks back flop, check, check. Like, there's only two streets bet, raise, and then bet and fold with top two pair. Like, it's crazy. That's so wild. Can't believe it. All right, uh, Kelvin's all in here with the ace-10 from Brazil. Vamos. Folds around to Peter Jetton in the big blind who lets it go. I'm going to watch the d pod later. Looking forward to it. That's awesome, dude. Love to see Helmuth, Greenstein, Seidel on some point as well. That would be amazing, dude. If I could get those guys on the podcast, I'd love to. I can't think of ever seeing an interview with Seidel. I don't know if he would agree to it. I mean, I've never met him, but I'd love the opportunity to talk to him. Helmuth, I've met before and I've talked to... I don't think I follow him on Twitter, or he doesn't follow me, so I don't know if I could get him on. I have to go through his agent or something. Kelvin F -bar. Is that who it is? Kelvin F -bar. Uh, yeah, Jabodi, that's it. That's the one, man. Uh, and then who's the third? Greenstein, yeah. I don't know if Barry follows me on Twitter. Barry Greenstein, he does not. He follows 41 people, and it's not me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if maybe if someone could get a hold of Barry Greenstein, I'd love to have him on. It'd be great, man. All right, Matthew from the UK is going to raise it up with a queen jack here. Now, Ben Heath in the big blind looking down at the ace of spades, 10 of clubs. This is the guy that I lost to set over set in Barcelona, deep in the EPT main event there. Uh, but I, have, I also met him... In Vegas, like, four years ago, four or five years ago, he was in Grips House with Charlie Carroll, Grips, and uh, um, really nice guy, like, really smart, incredibly successful at poker as well. So I really like him. He's a good dude. And he is a beast. You're right. I think he's a good good guy, man. Uh, Three-bet shoves the ace-10 here against Matthew, who isn't going to be able to call with the queen-jack, obviously. So... Why do half of live poker players look like they're homeless from Gunners? <laughs> I think I think you're incentivized to show zero emotion, you know what I mean? You're incentivized to look almost like bored or uh, not interested because any emotion is uh, is a way in, you know? That's why, I think. Think about Ludo's check back in the flop is if he didn't have a good hand, why wouldn't he bluff in the flop instead of checking back and raising the turn from three-piece mill? But but the thing is, though, like, under the gun has to check a lot of their range because of that board texture, right? It's queen, seven, five, uh, two clubs. Ludo calling on the button. Under the gun has to check, or under the gun plus one, has to check quite a bit because being out of position is a big disadvantage. And Ludo's going to have all sorts of hands like suited aces, like even some suited kings. All sorts of queens they're going to want to bet. And yeah, he's going to have some pairs uh, and sets as well. Um, but he's going to have all sorts of draws. So like he's going to actually debt, bet a decent amount on the flop. And would want to bet second and third set. Because under the gun plus one is capable of having, you know, a queen. Can have queen jack, can have queen ten, can have king queen. You could get potentially three streets of value out of, right? Uh, is going to have some club draws that might go for a check call that you want to start to get some money out of. So that board doesn't really favor under the gun as opposed to the, to the button, you know? Uh, under the gun has the over pairs, whereas the button just flatted, so they probably don't. But the button flatting is capable of having more pairs in the flop than under the gun. So it's just like one of those things where it's pretty reasonable for Ludo to, to bet a lot of hands, a lot of bluffs and a lot of good hands. So when he checks back... Uh, it's surprising because those good hands are going to want to balance out with the bluffs on the flop. 
right? So it's like generally showcasing some sort of showdown value, which of course it was with Jax, right? Queen 7-5, you have Jax. He's like, okay, this is a two street hand. So I'm going to check back. And then turn is a Jack. Uh, but we have to remember the preflop as well, right? He just flatted preflop. Jax is almost always a three bet with Jax preflop. So it's very crazy that he even has Jax there. I would never have Jax there. I think most players would never have Jax there. So he checks back to pot control, and then on the turn he raises. But like it, it illuminates his flop strategy that one of his showdown value hands he elects not to bet, right? Which is generally what the turn is going to be made up of. Like hands that miss too poorly that you don't want to over bluff, and then hands that don't want to get three streets of value, right? Um, and then some showdown value hands that don't want to get any value, and they just want to get to the river if possible. Like ace x, back to flush draw, something like that. It's incredible, man. It, it is the best fold I've ever seen. I have never seen in my life a better fold than that one. I can't believe it. Anyways, Nicholas in the cutoff with the ace four. Check, check. Ten on the turn. So Kelvin in the big blind is capable of having more sixes. Now, one of the issues here is stacks aren't super deep. Uh, Nicholas would like to get the show down, I think, and it doesn't necessarily have a hand where he needs to bluff on the flop. He could go for like a very small bet and get Calvin to fold some equity, especially with stacks being so short. It's difficult for Calvin to just like check jam it in there. But uh, he checks. Looks like he's giving up on the turn. And this is one of those hands that if you bluff this one, you're pretty much just bluffing every miss, you know? Because you're you're capable of bluffing spades, of bluffing all the straight draws and stuff like that. So you're, if you're bluffing queen nine offsuit, you're bluffing like basically your worst hands, your least equity hands. So. And uh, Calvin here on the dis on the river deciding he wants to bet or not. There's four spades out there. Gives it up. And Nicholas with the four is going to take it down. If that guy comes back to a scar for the next tournament, it would be hilarious. Never again. Uh, Ludovic Gaelic, man. Yeah. I mean, he he's on the Party Poker Team Pro, so I should... Ask him about that. Like, if we ever get him on the podcast, I want to ask him about it. Be like, hey, listen, I know you lost the pot, but please talk about this hand because it's an insane fold. It's really crazy. It's, yeah. I I promise you guys, I will definitely get that one uploaded as a standalone on YouTube, on Facebook. I mean, on Twitter even. Like, I got to figure out how to get that out there, Instagram, because I feel like, People need to know that hand exists, and people don't really. He must be translating some important stuff. Like, seriously. Like, I mean. Yeah, I know. I don't think it was the best fold I've ever seen. With sevens and fives, they're pretty easy to call in the button. Yes, I know. But, of course, they want to call. But you also have to factor in the flop check, man. So sevens and fives from a button calling range, we're talking about, like, I don't know, 5% of a button calling range, right? So, like, 1 in 20 times they have a set based on their range uh not including card removal and then when for them to check back on the flop with a set of fives or sevens again that's just almost never going to happen like i would wait it like one in ten times that's going to happen from an average opponent so like take that five percent down to half a percent so that and i'm not saying that's the likelihood of this happening but like that's what scott has to assume in that position that's how much he needs to weigh that likelihood in his mind What's the likelihood that they call preflop with fives and sevens is going to happen? What's the likelihood that they have that in the range when they check back at the flop? Almost never. Therefore, 0.5% of the time, I'm going to lose my 20 million bet because they have a set of fives or sevens. It's just like, it's so hard, man. It's so rare. So difficult for that to be like a significant portion of Ludo's range. The check back on the flop is the biggest part. 
Tens against Ace Three here. Kelvin is all in with the tens. Benjamin Heath in the big blind calling off with the Ace Three. I mean, nothing he could do here. Uh, of course, it's just you're getting the right price. You have an Ace in the big blind. Jack five deuce on the flop. John. Benjamin Heath picks up some outs. Seven outs. Thirty-two percent going to the turn. Seven on the river is not going to get it done. Only an ace. Only a four. Or uh, Kelvin is going to double up. Five is not going to do it. Nice hand for Kelvin. Twelve point six million chip pot going to go his way as we're down to fifty players. Benjamin Heath knocked down to fourteen point two million. That way, P.O. recommends you do random stuff small percentage of the times so that you can always have pretty much anything at any given time and get people the times that they have their 1% random actions like Flatting Jack Spree from Free Dude. Yeah, along that extent, although I'm not the most eloquent or educated enough to speak like really well about why P.O. recommends to mix strategies, but I think you're on the right lines, and that's my understanding of it as well, which is... In certain situations, if you if you do something all the time with aces, in certain situations, it makes it so that your strategy is exploitative or exploitable, right? So you need to be able to have basically every hand in every spot to have the most complex and difficult strategy to play against and maximize your EV, is my understanding. But there's something to like what Peel Solver recommends or Solver recommends you do, and then an implementable strategy where... You can't, you don't have a PO solver in your head. So you have to take lessons from it and apply it. And you're not capable of being a robot and accurately mixing things. You're probably just creating more leaks for your opponents to exploit. So there's something to that. I know the best players talk about randomizing. You know, like 70%, 75% of the time I'm going to do this, 25% of the time I'm going to do this. But flatting jacks pre, I think, is going to be a pretty small percentage of the time you flat there. Like very small. Um, so it's really unlikely, but it, maybe it's just like a one in one in eight times I'm gonna flat with Jack's pre here against good capable players, and never against bad players, but like against good capable players, one in eight times I'm gonna flat pre with Jacks, and then case Jack on the river. It's like crazy, crazy man. So, Ace King, Peter Jetton in the hijack here, looking down at 6.775. It's going to show in a second, but he's got to take a little bit of time here because you have to remember, it may look like a slow roll. We can see they both have the same hand, but you got to remember there's people behind Peter Jetton. So, if he's just like all in and snaps it in quick, when your opponents behind you have a close hand like jacks or tens, you may get them to the fold if you sort of illustrate how strong your hand is. So he's got to take a second just to be just so that he opens up the opportunity for him to have a close spot like a like a sevens or an eights or something like that. So that's what's going on there. Again, the, I mean these guys are playing for huge money, like insane money. Exclamation mark payouts if you want to see it in the chat. Uh, let's see where it is. I'm trying to scroll up and see it. Yeah, so tenth place gets a hundred k. So. We don't even have the final table of payouts there, but a lot of money on the line, you know? Ace King, Ace King, chop it up. Nice hands, nice hands. Peter Jetton used to have a podcast called Root Bone Radio with him and a couple friends. One of them was Snaggle Child. I don't, or Snaggle Ch Chid or something like that. I don't know how to say it. It's really good, man. It was just a thing like seven, eight years ago that I liked him and his group of friends. He seemed like a really good dude. And then he kind of dropped off, like, hasn't really been a public figure in the poker world for a while. So it's good to see him, like, out here competing in tournament poker and stuff. Seems like a nice guy. <laughs> How's Mr. Galifon doing today, man? Nice, he's up. That's cool, man. Good luck to Phil. Nicholas, son of the gun, is going to raise it up with the queen ten suited. So true. I'm going to 
Peter Jetton with the 9 6 of clubs. Bad position. A lot of players behind. Let's go. Here's the Ben Heath man with the Ace of Hearts, Queen of Spades. Very good hand. Sitting on 14 million chips. So I think the big blind is 500k. It might be 400k, but I think it's 500k. Let's see what he elects to do here. He can just shove, but probably more common is going to be 3-bet call or call. And it does just call here. Scott folds a ram in, in the small blind with a 5-3. We watched Ramen a little bit earlier in this tournament, I believe, right? Not, not like a 1K, but a 10K for sure. Now, Matthew in the big blind for the UK. Eight of diamonds, four of spades. Let's go. All right. 3.2 million in the middle. We can see Ben Heath has a much better hands with the Ace Arc's Queen of Spades. But Nicholas probably likes his hand. Queen 10 of hearts is a pretty hand, dude. I like it. Ooh, queen 6 deuce, one heart. This is really bad news for Nicholas. Uh, ben, ben Heath, I mean, top pair, top kicker, a pretty dry board. Nicholas starts with a check here, which in the queen jack hands is like the sorts of things you're going to see with some weaker queens, right? Which is why it's such a slam dunk bet with a set, which why Ludo almost never has a set. Unless he has the jacks and the case jack hit on the flop. Like, it's so unlikely, man. It's so unlikely. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. I can't believe it, man. <sighs> ben bets $825,000. And Nicholas going to continue in some facet. Looks like just a call yet. I mean, I, I think I like this here. We can see the hands, of course, but if you can't, you're thinking, I have top pair. My opponent's going to be bluffing a decent amount of time. Might as well allow them to bluff and just check. Ace in the turn. Okay. This allows Nicholas to get away from his hand. This is a scary card for him. I mean, probably not on the turn, but probably by the river. Uh, and Ben Heath with the top two pair now has got a love life. Uh... Le Jean Dom, in how much time are you going to play today? Well, I'm going to actually fire up a tournament on the side pretty quickly here. We'll be streaming online poker probably after the day three coverage. So in a couple hours or so. A couple hours from now. Bit of 3.2 million. Ben Heath. Action back on Nicholas, who is a pretty tough spot here on the turn. Like, that's not a good card for your hand. You are typically going to have a decent amount of aces that raise under the gun and check on the flop. So it's interesting if he can get away here on the turn. It'd be a great fold if he can. He does folds. Good folds. Good fold. And Benjamin Heath. Scooping up some chips. What's new, man? What is new? Thank you guys for hanging out with me today, Chad. I hope you're enjoying the uh, the show here. We were watching the Millions Caribbean World Day 3, the second half of the coverage here. We broadcast some of this past week as well. Uh, there's four days total. So the next broadcast after this one is going to be the final table to a champion is the idea. We're on no delay, me and you, but this tournament happened late November in 2019. But uh, worthwhile to go through because you find crazy, insane folds like the last hand that just people don't know about, you know? I've never seen before, so that's what we're doing, man. Welcome anyone new to the stream. Kelvin in the hijack. I need a drink as well, man. I had a short sleep last night. I was up to like 4.45 working. I was up today at 11 a.m. for some meetings. Um, so I I'm utilizing a bit of caffeine today <laughs> to uh, keep it going, bro. 
I came up with off the record chat. Keep this between me and you. Came up with I think my best poker idea ever. Like poker concept. Like uh, not necessarily stream concept, like a poker concept of things that could help and innovate in the game. I came up with one that just got me really excited last night. So I was like trying to model it and and build it and present it in a way to where I can show it to people that could actually make things happen. So yeah, I was I was excited about that, man. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if ever, anything ever comes of it. If it doesn't, I'll tell you guys one day what the idea was. I don't know if you want to keep talking about it, but Luda's raise on turn was suspect as well from three-piece mill. It's not often that you're going to see that strategy of check back flop raise turn. But in that instance, there's a decent amount of straight draws and two flush draws out there. So if Ludo has one of those draws and a hand that has no showdown value, he could elect to turn it into a bluff. And I would argue that's a lot more likely than him having a set on the turn. I don't think he has jack-7 suited. I don't think he has jack-5 suited. I don't think he checks back 7-5. I don't think he checks back 5s or 7s. And I don't think he flats pre with queens, which, by the way, would have had to flop top set and also check. So it's just like, I... I... Uh, yeah. It's suspect, but it man, I, it's so hard to find good hands for Ludo on the turn. It's just a pure soul read. It's crazy. Hunter, CR7, drop of the three-month resub. Welcome back to the team, Hunter. Thank you very much, man, for your support. I appreciate that. Thanks for making me a better poker player and great content. Much love. Thank you, dude. It's very kind of you. What is Raman going to do? Putting the time bank out. I mean, does not seem interested in folding here. Ace three of hearts. Only has 10 million left in his stack. And Matthew's basically like, I'm all in here. You know what I mean? Ramen really considering here. I mean, it's easy for us. We can see the hand, right? So this looks silly to us. Like, oh, what is he thinking about? Like, he has ace three. You got to remember, he doesn't know what Matthew has. I mean, I think the fold is definitely good, right? Like, Ramen should not get this in here. Ace three offsuit, like, Matthew can have all sorts of, like, better aces that are just three bit shoving there. But, uh, yeah. The information gathering is real. What you on about? How come no sound in the video? There's commentary. It's nice to start the broadcast on the top of the hour. So it's really yeah, hard to do true. commentary over top of commentary because you swap, you talk over each other all the time. We start recording at 2:15, and it's so like, about a 45 minute delay. Yeah. 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 So the best way to do these commentary streams is to have a feed with no table, like no commentary, so that you can increase the chip sounds and like the table talk, but then do your own commentary, and then also like. I don't want to put this too loud because I'm not paying these guys to do commentary. Like it's owned by Party Poker. They're they're like cool. Like you can you can restream it and like put it on Twitch. That's fine. But I also feel a little bit weird of like just replaying these guys' commentaries and thoughts and just like sitting back while they talk through hands. You know, like I feel like I should be a little bit more forthcoming with like actually trying to influence and change the content in a way to where I own it as opposed to just using their hard work and sitting on my laurels, you know? So yeah, that's how I feel about it, but... In the future, I've asked if when we get feeds, we can get clean feeds where there's just the audio from the table and the chip sounds and stuff, and the graphics, but no commentary, to therefore be able to turn that up so we can hear it, and then like give clean thoughts on it, you know? So that's, hopefully that's, that's what we're gonna do. That's the plan, man. Kelvin Ray's take it down. That fold is awesome, man. I can't believe it. Table audio. Yeah, that's just that's a, that's very different to the 
Fucking Ghost Studios. The chips, man. Insane. The chips. You watch any esports, Dempsey? Can't say I do, my man. Uh, you? Watch a little bit. I like big competition, you know? Like, whatever it is. Yeah, I guess you just don't understand it enough. Vibes. True. Big comps. True. Esports. True. Kelvin under the gun. With the King's Bay Seven of Clubs. Maybe you can just play with chips while talking. Yeah, I could. I could just, like, mess around with some chips. I actually should get some because uh, I've got some chip tricks, man. I can do some things, like, from my live poker grinding days. I could do some stuff that I think the average Twitch viewer would find kind of cool, but I don't have any. Don't ignore me, honey. Hey! Volved HH. What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? What's your problem, man? What what what'd you say to me, huh? What'd you say to me? Can I hear a welcome to the climb one day at a time, Dreamers Unite? Let's go! That's all you get, man. That's all you get, bro. <laughs> okay? There has to be a more... I, listen, I'm not just like on command <laughs> readout for you, okay? But I do like the slogan, and I feel like we got to bring it back somehow, man. We got to bring it back. Welcome to the climb one day at a time. Dreamers Unite, let's go. I think the worst part about that is the Unite part because, you know, it's like there's no fight to fight. You know, like <laughs> we're not in a war against anyone. Like we, I wish there's a different word than Unite, but I like Welcome to the Climb one day at a time. Dreamers recite. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Dreamers recite. Poetry. Let's go. <laughs> You ever consider playing the 10k WSP main event here in America? I played it once, man. Busted day three early. Like eights or nines to jacks. Something like that for 20 bigs. It's a good one. It's a good tournament, man. I mean, the structure is incredible and deep and long. And people are making mistakes for sure. There's a lot of just not very good poker decisions. So it is it is a great event. Like People say that about every tournament. They're just like, oh, all these tournaments are soft. The, it's just like a meme but the world series of pokemon event actually is like there's thousands of hometown heroes that have won their way there in a home game league that are trying their shot to to live the dream you know there's a lot of those and uh it's special so it is a very special tournament Nicholas here in the cutoff with the Ace of Clubs, Eight of Diamonds. Remaining in the last for a 10K Peter Jetton. Free money added by Looking down at garbage, man. 6.1 million. Not a lot of chips. 49 players left in the field. I think we're on a pay jump here. 5K pay jump. Is there a place to go for poker staking or you just have to know some people? There's like open marketplaces that exist. Like uh, Poker Market was a place I was sponsored by like four years ago. So they had an open market then. There was also 2 plus 2 uh, marketplace, if you want to figure out how that works. Um, I think you stake is more open as well. Uh, stake Kings just acquired them. Um, but Stake Kings is by invitation only. So that's the thing. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. And then there's like stables, you know, that will back players. For like longer term agreements as opposed to one off kind of staking stuff. Uh oh, Calvin. Uh oh, buddy. <laughs> Nicholas raises in the cutoff with the ace eight. Calvin calls the big blind. And look what we have here trip baits for Nicholas. Calvin flops top pair. How many coolers have we had this, this uh, day three coverage, right? Pretty crazy. Unctious SC. Cheers, man. Yeah, bro. Life is good. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in just for a hot second, man. Is there a raise your edge stable? I don't think they back players. I think they have an agreement with um, with 
Patrick Leonard stable though. Bit be staking. I think they affiliate for each other or something like that. I saw a post about it. So yeah, you can get into like Patrick Leonard staking and stuff. I think through that. There's BBZ staking. There's the Bit B staking. There is Pokar staking. There's Smart Spin staking. There is uh, there's a lot of Brazilian groups as well that I don't know very well as to what their staking situation is. There's a lot. There's a lot of groups of backed poker players. Samba Poker Team, as you can see here, is probably a staking group. Like, uh, there's a lot, man. Playing it all today. I'm gonna play some KO series, man. Yep. I'm gonna fire one up on the side pretty soon, actually, and get it. Uh, you know, just get it firing a bit. Especially, I guess, when you're playing pot on a table that is uh, lower in chips than the average. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, Calvin calls with the top pair. The, the top I don't think he can fold yet uh, to the river. And let's see. And we'll see what the river is. Nine would obviously give Calvin the best hand or a queen. Jack probably spells the end for him I, I guess nicholas could have a nine right nicholas could also have an eight he could also have a hand like ace king or you know king nine or or what have you like he he could have some of those hands so it's an interesting river it's gonna be tough for calvin to get away with less than a pot size bet and now top two pair right standard backing that's another one as well that's right Yeah, Nick, Nick Marchington. There you go. I thought it was as well. World Series of Poker Main Event, final tableist. He's also uh, been around the Twitch streets as well. I forget what his Twitch name is, but he's been around. See, Dizzle, I miss your vlogs. Yeah, dude, it's a fun one. Check, check. All right, there it is. Nicholas checks back with the trip aids. Is going to win the hand. And I hear the other commentators talking about, like, I think that's a good decision, actually, with the trip aids, which is interesting. But when you think about... What hands are your opponent going to call? You can try and get value from with, from trip aids. Like you're hoping for basically queen jack, right? Which is in a very difficult spot. So interesting, but I think a, a fine check back there. Final 48 players. I believe we have just hit a pay jump. We already, yep. No, we've hit a pay jump. Every player is guaranteed 40,000. There it is at the bottom of the screen. Just in time. <laughs> All right. There it is, man. <laughs> There it is, forty thousand dollars for all the remaining players. Oh, how I dream of that day. You're gonna upgrade to the Tourney Masterclass soon from the Apprentice. Do you get a kickback for that three-piece meal? If you originally bought the course through one of my links or using my discount code, I think you do. Yeah. Uh, I think I do. If you bought it through someone else's code or link or something, then no, I wouldn't. It would just depend where you originally bought it from. But uh, enjoy it, man. It's a great course. Raise your edge has been huge, Jamie. So much love. Cheers, man. This is a 10,300 gunners. Yeah, I forgot to put that in the title, by the way. what a, Have I even clickbaited before, man? I got to put no delay 10,300. Millions Caribbean world. Gunners, thank you, dude. I owe you 100 viewers in the next hour, man. How could I forget to put $10,300 in the title? True. All right. In action here, Ramen with the King Jack suited. Scott with the 7 3 suited. Flop is Jack 9 Deuce. Ramen with the top pair. King of Spades kicker. So Ramen's going to bet. And Scott in the big blind is just going to have to give it a go. There's nothing he can do here, right? Just got a pass. Moving on. Nice hand, Raman. A lot of bracelets, man. 
That's a big bracelet game. What do you guys think about it? I'm kind of just noticing now. Big time commitment. I mean, I think it's cool. I've never been a bracelet guy. But it does look good to me. But is it not cumbersome? You know? Like, that's a lot of scratchy, scratchy on the table. Walking around things, you got to be careful in the bracelets, man. Peter Jetton in the hijack with the 9 and the 9. This is going to be a play here. He's sitting on 6.1 million. The big blind has 500,000. So he has 12 big blinds to start this hand. 12 bigs. All in shove here from Peter Jetton. Let's see if anyone else wakes up with something worthy of giving some action here. Nothing yet, nothing yet. Raman, okay. Peter Jetton taking it down. Nice pot. Going to go play football in 40 minutes. It's freezing, and I really CBA. Uh, I play in gold, too, so it's even colder. Yeah, I, I hear you on that, man. It seems cold here in Scotland, too, but I haven't been outside today. Hey, Siri. What is the weather outside? It's currently partly cloudy. Four degrees, bro. Oh my god, it's gonna get down to zero tonight? Turn the heat on, B car. Let's pump up the heat. It's gonna get freezing in here, man. Freezing. Uh yeah, I'm about you. I also we were talking about it just the other day. Rebecca and I and Chris really excited for summer. Hopefully the allergies don't get worse and they stay the same. Or better. Imagine that. But I am so excited for sunlight again because it's just dark all the time here. <laughs> With the poker time zone. And in the summer, it's only dark for like two and a half hours, maybe. And it's not like fully dark in Scotland. Which is great. You know, like I'll be able to stream and go outside and it's like dusk. You know, at midnight or at one in the morning. Can't wait for that. And then a little bit of heat, man. It'll be nice. Or, like, hotter than three degrees. It was absolutely arctic when I came to Scotland. I would retire from football if I had to play up your way. Yeah, bro. I feel that. I feel that, man. I feel it. I won the KO Series 6 low. Jabodi getting it done, man. It was a low prize. The trophy's still cool. Hopefully, you'll get one, too, and in the big one. I hope so, man. It would be... Yeah. I just... I want to get one. It, it reminds me. I should register uh, the early KO Series here. King, queen, jacks, jack, eights. We could do a flop of 10, 5, 3. Nicholas Marchinston still has the best hand here, raising out of the gun. Raman has missed, and Scott has missed as well. Raman seems interested in playing pots, though. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Saren113, it really depends legally where I am a resident, which is up for debate, so I'm... Getting some research done on that by my accountants in Canada who are legally looking into whether I pay tax as a Canadian resident given my visa or whether I would still be deemed as a, or if I'm deemed a Canadian resident or if I would have to pay tax for a year here in the UK, basically. Um, if I pay in the UK, my understanding is I don't pay tax on poker income. If I pay in Canada, I do. But still, my preference is to pay taxes in Canada because Canada is my home and uh, it's going to be very complicated and expensive and stressful if I need to short-term switch who I'm paying taxes to. So we'll see what happens. Don't know. Waiting on the accountant's sort of deliberation on that. Man Illusion, we don't have any prop bet for Team Online Pros Banking. Uh, there is a contest out there for the first one to win. Can win a ticket, but... Uh, no, no, we don't have any contests amongst ourselves, Team Online. Aaron, from the United States of America, with 58 million <laughs> units. Wow, that's fucking hard to work with. All the bundles of heads and shit. Feels good, man. Whoa! You can't, you can't, you can't put him down to an overall strategy. No, I know, I just, he's... Ram is gonna... He's his own way. Looks like he's regretting it. Fold right? the 9-3 suited. Matthew in the small blind, 7.2 million with the sixes. This is going to be a play. The standard move is all in, which it looks like he does here. Pretty quickly, Nicholas folds, and a nice pot for Matthew. Oh, 
Only thing we have here is if you win 2,000 pounds in a casino, you have to have ID for money laundering checks, but sh no tax, which is nice. Yeah, man. Uh, Aaron Van Blarkham moving to the table here. 58 million chips, 116 big blinds. It's quite a lot of chips. That is a lot of chips, man. It's a very good position for Aaron to be in. Um, let's see how he does, man. See how he does. He's given an army vibe off for sure. I mean, the hat with the star. I'm just like, th this is an army vibe I'm getting. This is a disciplined guy. That's what I'm seeing right now. Let's see what happens. Recently as well. Yeah, a lot of dollars. Shout out to Simon Higgins watching from home. See you in London, mate. Here he is, back to me. Scott raises it up to 1.2 million. Raman's gonna fold. Hello, Rebecca. Whoa, Rabi car is going driving, man. You're driving to the store? That's a good call. Matthew's all in ace king against ace queen here, probably. Let me think about it. Come sweat. You want to sweat? Chris, come sweat. Twitch open champion. Ace king, ace queen. I'm assuming Scott's going to call here. What do I want from the shop? What are you guys having for dinner? Unknown. Unknown, eh? Mm. Hmm. Just get some dinner. Oh, he called. He called. Ace King, Ace Queen. Two clubs for the Ace King as well. Matthew's in good shape. Scott has got a big heart, though. That's all you need. Man. I like his shirt. Scott's shirt? Yeah. Mm. Good shirt from the B car has been called. Oh, Whoa! Oh eight, eight, seven, deuce, 12 outs. Going to the turn. It's basically a flip now. 46% for Scott. Turn card, 10 of diamonds. There's no help. 12 outs remain, 27%, or Matthew's going to double up. Big sweat. Four will not get it done. Uh, it is a low patch, pocket patch, the rec patch. But I think he's a very successful guy, and he donates his tournament winnings to charity and stuff. Like he's, he's well off, so don't be too sad for him, and he's also a legit guy. You know? Chat? So what are you guys going to eat for dinner? Do you know? There's no stories. I want some dinner. Some dinner would be good. Something to eat. No, we got soup at the fridge. A soup overload, man. So much soup. Yes. Yep. And some vegetables. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you. You guys are the best. Have fun. Drive well, b -car. Jimmy, cheers for the streams, dude. I'm going to be away for a bit. Don't miss me too much. Jim Lad, no! No, Jim Lad. Stay. Aw, oh, Jim Lad, where'd you go in, man? Where are you going, dude? Please don't leave. Come check in at least. No internet? Check in. For just a second, say hey. Just, you know, take attendance like once a week or something. Like, hey, still here. See you soon. Please, man. Play poker with Scott at least a hundred times. He's from Halifax. Oh, okay. Have you? Leg TV Maximus Black. What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. Um, from Halifax. Normally plays one, two, no limit. So what's his story then? Do you know his story really well? Uh, Maximus Black, is it? Is he like a very successful guy in life, like in business or something like that? Um, but like poker's his hobby? Because that's the story I know, but I don't. I don't have specifics really. Need to spend less time on Twitch from Jim Ladd. All right, bro. All right, man. I understand. <laughs> okay. Still pop in. Still say hey. Please, once a week, at least two minutes, man. Just be like hi and bye. That's all right. Card Bandit. Jamie, do you think rebuy tournaments are good for poker? I think they're okay. I think they're fine. I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think they help poker rebuy or reentry tournaments, but I also don't think they hurt poker as much as people think they do. So, 
I don't really enjoy playing them very much. I'm closer to indifferent, indifferent than against them, but it's clearly not a positive. Kelvin's going to raise it up onto the gun with the jacks. Nicholas now in the cutoff with eights. Got to like his hands. I mean, again, I think the standard move here with eights is to three bet, get it in. The big blind is 500,000 chips. So Nicholas has got to be thinking. Kelvin, to start this hand, had 17 blinds. It's okay. I mean, that's, that's fine. But it looks like Nicholas is just going to... Oh, no, there is the three bet. Okay, 2.8 million. I was confused for a second. So I think it's going to be a three bet call. Aaron with the king three folds in the small blind. Ben Heath with the king jack quickly folds in the big blind. And now back on Kelvin. Oh, I think it's it's pretty easy decision to move all in here. At least that's how I would uh, approach it. Here it is. Jacks against eights. Three, four, five on the flop. All right, let's get like a six or a deuce for the sweat. Six preferably, you know, for some more outs. Six or seven. Nine's not it. Two outs left for Nicholas or else it's going to be a double up for Kelvin here. The jack and the jack. Seven doesn't get it done. We needed that on the turn, man. We needed it on the turn. Given the stack size of the eights versus jack seems pretty standard. 17 big blinds to start the hand, I think so. Yeah, a little bit less. A little bit less. 16.75 or something. Lame hands. Yeah, it just, just is what it is, right? Come on. Give us the turn sweat. Additional outs. Thank you guys very much for tuning into the stream. If you're just tuning in, and I should actually get a table going on the side, so let me... I'm going to open up my party caption, turn off table manager, so that I can register a KO series. So I'm going to get a 55 going here to play this on the side. We're going to continue with the commentary until the end of the day. I think we have about three hours left of live poker commentary. But we're also going to try and win a KO series as well. That's the plan, man. So thank you guys for hanging out. Let's keep it going. $55 KO series on the side. Probably just skip the early 530. There's a lot of higher stick stuff later on in the day as well. Like the um, 320, 8 max, 55, 8 max, 320 and 55 PLO, 109, fast. 5.30 turbo tonight. It'll be some good stuff, dude. Start with the 55, though. Actually pull it over right beside the chat so that it's easier to play while watching you guys. Um, okay, so we have an answer from Leg TV Maximus Black. Pretty sure he made his money off being a translator. I remember him talking to the table a while about it. He knows how to speak a lot of languages, but I'm not 100% sure how he made his money. He's at the poker rooms almost every day of the week. Amazing, dude. I'd love to meet this Scott guy. I'd love to meet him. That sounds really cool, man. Thanks for the, the context on that, bro. Jimmy, what do you think about the pros these days not showing any emotions when the cards are on their backs in all-in situations from Rookie for Life? Well, here's the thing, man. It's a difficult question. Um, the thing is, from a pure game perspective, like them as a player, I don't think they have any responsibility to create a an entertaining show or an entertaining stream or anything like that. I think everyone has a responsibility to be polite and to deploy good etiquette, but I also don't think they have to entertain, right? And I think it's a common defense mechanism for poker pros, especially online poker pros today, to learn to not show emotion because emotion is weakness, you know? 
It's not, but it, it can feel like weakness. It's like a way in. It's a way to crack the solid outer case of a player. So to care about something opens you up to disappointment. It opens you up to failure. It opens you up to huge fluctuations in how you feel. And that's not helpful in poker in a game that has a ton of variance. And it's not helpful to give yourself up to your opponents like that. So it's pretty natural to just be even keeled as much as you can all the time. And it makes sense that the best performers tend to be like that. Now that does not make a very interesting story or a very interesting show, right? So that's a problem poker content has, poker media has, poker storytellers have in trying to convey the game the way it is, how those of us that love it know it is. But I don't think it's a problem that the players have. I don't think it's their burden. I think it's the storyteller's burden. And I also think there's going to be a market where players that are more animated and show a little bit more of themselves are going to get some of the value back because there's not as many people interested in being part of the story anymore. And I am hopefully one of those guys, man. So, yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about it, man. Oh, my goodness, we got problems here, Ramen. Bets 1.3 million on the Jack 7-6, but we can see Nicholas has the top pair, has the top kicker. Scott also has a pair. But Nicholas feels good, man. 11.6 million back. Can we get some love in the chat for Killing Bird 63 months? We're talking 6-3, man. I've been streaming for that long. Did you guys know? And Killing Bird, every single month, reached into his wallet, opened it up, took out the fives, slapped it down. It means a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Killing Bird. Well, here we are again. Good to see you in the streets today. Cheers. Thank you very much. If anyone in the chat hasn't checked out Killing Bird, he is an American guy, streams in America, on the American sites, generally late night. Uh, awesome, dude. Check him out. Go check out his stream. Hang out there. Get to know him. He's awesome. Thank you very much, Killing Bird. Thank you. All right. So Nicholas just calls with Top Pair Top Kicker. Deuce of hearts on the turn. This is not a scary card for Raman. Raman might get in trouble here. When you just get called, you have eights. Like, the, you're bunched up. I feel in a corner here. I'm like, oh, what do I do? I have, like, an underpair. It might be good. It might not. Like, do I bet? Do I check? Do I check all? Do I check fold? Do I check raise all in? What do I do? It's hard. He's Raman's in a bit of a corner. The stacks are so tight. It's claustrophobic, this hand. And Nicholas has got to feel fine. So let's see what happens. We are down to 44 players remaining in the tournament. 44 players left. Everyone is guaranteed $40,000. Again, we get the love of the chat for three-piece meal. Drop the 10-month resub. Welcome back to the team, three-piece meal. Thank you very much for your support, my friend. 10 months in the building. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. And this is what I mean for ramen. Kind of stuck in the corner. It's just like a hand that you don't love and you don't hate. It's just there and you got to make some tough choices. <laughs> it's right on the edge. So ramen's going to call, okay? Now, this leaves 10.6 million in the middle, and Raman has 5.5 million back. Let's see what happens. Queen of Hearts. So, another potentially scary card for eights, but I don't really think Nicholas has very many queens. But it doesn't look like a good card to eights. And Nicholas now has an overcard fall. Also, the backdoor flush draw got there, so he's got to consider that. I think probably will end up checking here, I would guess. I mean, he's trying to get called by a 7 or 8s or 9s or 10s. But he does go for the bet, and he might get a call here. I mean, it's there's relatively few hands Raman can call. This is one of them that he beats. But if Raman folds this, then Nicholas should probably check. Then he's only getting value from, like, Jack-10. Jack, I mean, under the gun plus 2. Like, Jack-10, Jack-9 suited... 
and King Jack. Not much, man. This is too thin of a bet, I think, from Nicholas. We can see he has the best of it, but. I'm like, I want to count. Uh, can you cut those down? Make sure they're 20s. Ramen is not happy with this. 44 left in the field. It's a tough spot for him. That's what I mean. Like, this hand is just really hard. He's just kind of stuck. Do you have to be a sub to get your love? I thought you were a hippie groovy dude and into free love from Baloo. Nah, dude, you don't got a sub to get the love from me, man. I appreciate all of you being here and uh, and supporting the show. I wouldn't describe myself as a hippie, though, <laughs> or very groovy. I don't know. I don't feel like that describes me well, but much love to the hippie people and the groovy people out there, man. I mean, keep doing your thing. And you are a VIP balloon, exactly. That's the thing. People get VIP status when they've been here for a long, long time, supporting a big way. I mean, there's a lot of long-time subs that if they weren't subs at a certain point, I'd just VIP them, you know? Like Killing Bird, for example, has supported for 63 months. Like, it's enough. <laughs> like, if Killing Bird decides, like, hey, I don't want to give you $5 anymore, that's all right. He's a VIP for life. Like, he earned it, you know? <laughs> he earned it. He's in the club. <laughs> Can subs get a VIP? See, I don't know how the VIP and sub badge work. I'm not sure. I don't know if you show one or the other. I feel like that's the case. Ramen is not happy here, man. I think he's going to call, though. Like, he wants to call, right? He wants to call. He doesn't want to bust, but he wants to call. He's just trying to figure out if he can not call or if there's some reason he shouldn't call. But this to me is like, I think this is a call. I'd be very surprised if he folds. We'll see. He does block some bluffs on the flush got there. I don't think he should call, but I think he will. You're right, though, Jabodi. He blocks, he blocks the draws he's hoping that Nicholas has. Oh, Nicholas has a flush, by the way. Oh. <laughs> by the way, breaking news, Nicholas has the nuts. I thought he had a second pair of jacks. There it is. Well, um, thank you guys for letting me know. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a flush for Nicholas. Nice hand. I thought he was value betting second pair top kicker. And I was like, wow, that's pretty wide. I don't think you should value bet. Um... <laughs> It was fine. He didn't need it anyways. He still had the best of it. And GG to Ramen.